Our product manager wants Chico's Bikes to do some marketing. To keep our brand in our customers' minds, we want to send a regular newsletter. The newsletter is going to contain information about our company, as well as exciting deals on discounted cheese bikes and accessories. We need to build a mailing list for this newsletter. So, we'll let users sign up using a subscription form. Our product manager wants the form to be as follows. It should accept the user's full name and email address. These are mandatory. If the form submission fails, the user sees an error message. And if the submission succeeds, it should display a welcome message with the user's name. To do this in non-AMP pages, we'd use the HTML form element. AMP provides an AMP form component, which actually uses the same name, form, as well. So what's the difference? First, let's quickly review web forms. Forms are used to send data from a website to a server. They contain input fields where users can enter information. Form inputs might include things like text fields, combo boxes, check boxes, radio buttons. And once a user submits a form, the data they entered is sent to the server for processing. A new page is then loaded from the server, causing a full page refresh. But modern web users expect more friendly web forms. If they've entered invalid data, they want to know that immediately. When they submit form data, they don't always want the whole page to refresh. Users want to see helpful messages. They want to know when their form data was accepted or when an error occurred. Now to provide these features, usually developers have to reach for JavaScript, Ajax, and similar technologies. AMP forms extend the behavior of normal HTML forms by providing easier ways to perform things like form validation, form verification, form submission without a page refresh, and success and error messages. They also provide a lot more. AMP forms also provide a set of events that allow developers to execute actions against other components when forms are submitted, valid, invalid, verified, and so on. These events are also useful for showing success and error messages, loading spinners, and so much more. AMP forms also provide additional functionality to form inputs. For example, AMP adds change and input debounced events to each input field to make it easier to track when users change their input. AMP provides additional CSS hooks to make styling your forms easier. And lastly, AMP provides polyfills that make sure your forms work well in all browsers. AMP provides a great deal of versatility for building forms, more than we can even cover here. So check the documentation for AMP form to learn even more. Now let's practice using the AMP form. In this exercise, we'll practice creating forms, and we'll experience how AMP forms extend traditional forms. So it's time to implement our subscription form. Using the documentation for AMP form, add a form below to your new header. Remember that the element is called form, not AMP form. The form should contain text inputs for the user's name and email. It should contain a button labeled subscribe. This is going to be an input of type submit and it should be able to post form responses to slash submit dash form. Here's how you post those form responses. The server we provided in your glitch is already set up to listen at this endpoint. The server runs on the same base URL as your website. So for example, if your website is at hungry-modem.glitch.me, then the server will listen for form submissions at hungry-modem.glitch.me slash submit dash form. The method attribute determines whether you'll send data via a post or a GET request. And the action XHR attribute contains your server's URL. Let's put a heading above our new subscription form. Do this by adding an H2 tag above the social sharing links with class main-heading and the words subscribe to our newsletter. Add a div tag with class subscribe-card-container below that H2 tag. In this div, add another div tag with class subscribe-card. In this div tag, we're going to add the form as we've described above with a class of main-form, method set to post, action XHR of slash submit-form, and a target of underscore top. To that form, we'll add the two required input fields, one with type text and name name, and the other with type text and name email. Each input 
should be wrapped in its own div tag with class input. At the bottom, add a submit input labeled subscribe with class button. You can always review these instructions in the course text on the AMP site. Now, pause the video and try it out. When you're done, your code should look like this. Notice the H2 tag that contains our heading and the divs that contain the form tag. The form tag does a post to the submit-form endpoint, and it has two inputs and a subscribe button. Sorry we couldn't fit both inputs on the screen, but you get the idea. And as usual, remember to add the extended component script for AMP form in the head as you see on screen.